we're going to put a reverse image transfer onto this galvanized bucket. So I have an old galvanized bucket here. It's a 12 liter. You can buy them at any dollar store, um, hardware store. Some white chalk paint. I'm using the bare right now. It's what I happen to have on hand, but any chalk paint will work. So this was colored the same as Annie Sloan's Polished Pearl, I think is the name of it. And the reverse image transfer, which is available in my Etsy store as a part of a printable bundle, just printed out on regular paper. So I'm going to put a towel underneath it because the bucket obviously is pretty wobbly. So to keep it sort of, well, to keep it in one spot, I just tuck in the sides like this and it helps to make it a little bit easier to work on this way. Our first step is we're going to figure out where we want that image to go and I have just, you can use a light box to find out where it is. You need to put it on this way so you need to sort of trace the outline of the image so you know where it's going when you put it on your project. Because it's going to be going on upside down. You can see through the light I actually just put it up against a window and traced around, gently around the image so I could see where it was when it's time to do it. I'm just trying to figure out my position here. You do what's good for you. I mark the bucket, but it doesn't really show up. Um, and then it's just a matter of what you like. So I'm just trying to decide where do I want the writing to be. This is a very rustic project, so some of the writing will come off, some of the color will come off, and it comes a, a lot lighter than the print. So you need to be aware of that. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be rustic. If you want perfect, this is not the project. <laughs> So I'm just deciding, oh, I think right about there seems good. And I eyeball it. You can measure. That's not my thing. If you know me at all, you know. And that goes aside while we get ready to do the paint. So I'm just taking an old chip brush because I like the textured effect it leaves and it's a cheap thing to have. They're easy to get a hold of at any hardware store. And I'm going to paint a coat on right onto the bucket right where I want that image to go. So you're basically making the base for your image because printers don't print white. So you need some kind of light base so all the white in the image will show up. Otherwise it's going to be transparent wherever the white is on an image in a printer, in a printed image. So this is not perfectly white. This is more of an Annie Sloan color, one of her vintage white color matches. I think it's polished pearl in the bear which is pretty good dupe for the Annie Sloan Antique White. Give it a quick dry. And we're going to start speeding stuff up here. And I'm testing to see if it's dry. No, it's not. <laughs> We're just letting this dry. Use a heat gun or blow dryer, whatever you have. Then your second coat of paint goes on. And this needs to be fairly thick because this is what your actual image is going to be embedded in. It's not going to be like decoupage. There's not going to be any rough edges when you're done with the paper. You're not going to be able to feel the paper on the image. You're going to. F it's going to feel like it's transferred the ink on, which is exactly what it's going to be doing. So nice thick coat where the image is going to be. You need to be this, this to be fairly uh, reasonably good thick coverage so that your image has something to grab. I'm going to take some transparent cl uh, plastic wrap and I'm going to use that to help me keep the image. I'm going to decide not upside down, that's bad. Now this is why you've marked it so you have a pretty good idea where you want it to go. And I'm just deciding where I like it and now it's on. You get a couple of shots of this but try not to you actually only get one shot. Try not to uh, move it around once it's on there. Now I'm just rubbing it in with my fingers and you can see I'm tearing the paper because I'm I don't want those edges to get embedded in the paint. I need them to stay up out of the paint but I want everything else to be really smoothed down against that paint as much as is humanly possible which is why we have the plastic wrap and I'll use a credit card. You can use the back of a spoon um, but you really want to burnish this into the paint without tearing your paper. So that is why we're doing this. 
and like I say, you don't want those edges of the of the paper stuck in the paint. It'll make it really hard to get up later. So you just keep burnishing and burnishing until you get it where you think everything is. And you can start to see the image look like it's coming through a little bit. It's a little bit easier to see. So you just, all the high spots, you make sure you get it there. And the low spots, get it in. Just use your finger or a spoon, uh, whatever you have. But make sure it's really stuck there because once that's stuck, that's where your image is going to transfer to. If it is not stuck there, there will be no image transfer. So you see I'm making sure that that bottom piece is not stuck in the paint. And I can always touch up the paint later, which I do. So don't worry about that little bit of scratch. There you see I did tear the paper, so make sure you keep plastic between you and the paper and that'll help. There we go. And I'm just making sure I can see, I could see a couple of spots that looked like they had bubbled a bit. So I'm just, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it till you're fairly certain you've got almost all of it. Again, it's a rustic look. You're not going to get all of it, but that's okay. The more you do this, the, the better it is. Now you let that dry overnight and then you gently tear this paper off. Now remember, this is double time. So gently tear this paper off and you can see the image is still left. You're bas basically taking one of the layers of paper off and it's leaving a layer of paper behind. And that paper, that layer is now in that paint. Now you can see why I didn't want you to have the edges in the paint. Now the time fun begins. We're going to wet this with our sponge, get it wet, and then start getting what's left of that paper off your paint. So this is a, takes a bit of time and I like to do it with my hands and you just start rubbing and rubbing gently and easily until you start to see the image come up and the paper, the wet paper starts to roll off. And you spend some time doing it. You can do it with a sponge, but I find it's better with your hands. Uh, you, it's much easier not to get too much of the image taken off. If you get too crazy with this and if you get too aggressive, it will scratch that image right out of the paint. So that's why I like to use my fingertips and just keep adding warm water and adding warm water and rolling and then wiping it off. And we just keep at it until we're happy with that image. Now you'll probably have to do this more than you think because when it dries it gets a little uh, powdery looking sometimes. That means there's still paper left on there. But it's, it's a delicate dance between taking off too much and getting your image to come off or just leaving a little bit. You just try it. But there is a little trick at the end I'm going to tell you about in order how to um, overcome that if that's the case if you do have image that's still sort of powdery looking. So we just keep going until you're happy. And you can see most of that image has come out pretty well. I didn't lose a lot this time. And I've done it quite a few times now. So, But it now feels just like it's like smooth paint. It just feels like it's painted on there. So I'm pretty happy with that.
And I'm going to just get all that paper, all those little roll balls of paper, get them off, and let this dry. Now I'm going to touch up any edges I want, do a little sanding, and then do one final step. But I actually changed my mind on this, um, and I'll let you know why in a minute. So this is good. We're all good. Do the final steps. Then we'll do the sanding, and I'll talk about how to really make your image pop. So we're good with that. We let that dry. Once it's dry, you can sand any places you think you want it to be a little more rustic. You can sand right over the image and have that come off too. That's completely up to you. I left the image intact this time, but you can see it's a little powdery looking because there's still some paper left on there. And you see I have some wax over there. I did work with wax, but I didn't like the effect in the end. It really yellowed the paper. So I have a little trick and that is to use a, a sealer over it once it's dry, a basic matte sealer from woodworking shops, and don't use the wax because the wax did yellow, but the sealer worked really well. And there's a finished product waiting for some kind of Christmas decorations.